You may be seated. Good afternoon. All right, let's go on the record in the state of Ohio versus Stacy Larisha. This is case number 690595. Present court is Ms. Larisha along with her counsel, defense attorney Morgan Caruso, representing the state of Ohio as assistant prosecuting attorney Brandon Patel. We are set for sentencing today in this matter on September 16th of 2024. Ms. Larisha withdrew her previously under pleas of not guilty and entered pleas of guilty to counts one and three in the indictment, count one being grand theft, revised code section 2913.02A1, that's a felony of the fourth degree. Ms. Larisha also pled guilty in count three to theft in office, revised code section 2921.41A1, that is also a felony of the fourth degree. Prior to today's sentencing hearing, the court ordered a pre-sentence investigation report. That pre-sentence investigation report was completed on October 2nd of 2024. That report was authored by investigator Fratina, F-R-A-T-E-N-A. Prior to today's sentencing hearing, the court had an opportunity to review that report. Ms. Caruso, did you have an opportunity to review that report as well? Yes, Your Honor, I did, and I do find it to be accurate. Thank you. And Mr. Patel? I did, Your Honor, and I did find it to be accurate. All right. In terms of the sentencing hearing, Mr. Patel, is there anything you'd like to present on behalf of the appellant? Your Honor, I would like to present that the court find that the defendant has violated the Eighth Amendment and the Fourteenth Amendment of the Constitution by failing to provide effective assistance of counsel to the defendant. This case involved a 5K charity run that was organized by primarily Ms. Larisha last year, actually for last October. It was to benefit the then-principal of Rush High School, Michael Fording, who was battling cancer at the time. After the organization and running of that race, there came to be an issue with the amount of funds that the family received from the proceeds. It was a benefit organized for Michael Fording and his family. After which, it was learned that Ms. Larisha had obtained and kept a large amount of proceeds. The investigation revealed that that amount was over $25,000 that would have rightly gone to the Fordings but was improperly kept by Ms. Larisha. As a result of that investigation, it was also learned that Ms. Larisha, who was an employee of Rush High School, was also stealing student funds, cash, generally fees that were collected by her, and then deleted from the records so that she could take an additional over $4,000 separately, not from the Fording family but from Rush High School. As a result of this investigation and this prosecution, Ms. Larisha has agreed to pay full restitution to the victims. It is my understanding through her counsel, and she has provided records to the court and to myself today, that she has paid $12,500 of that restitution. That leaves remaining to be paid $15,238.68 to the Fording family. Your Honor, I'd also like to bring to the court's attention that, as I said, Missy Fording 
the widow of Michael Fording is present in court today. She'd like to address the court with an impact statement on behalf of the family. She's accompanied also by her three daughters, Michael Fording's three daughters, by Michael Fording's sister, and by his parents. If the court would hear her impact statement now. Yes, Mr. Patel. Ms. Fording, can you step up for me, please? Mrs. Fording, can you please come to the podium? Prior to giving your statement, can you kindly state your first and last name for the record? Missy Fording. And can you spell your first name for me, please? M-I-S-S-Y. Uh, Ms. Fording, I just want to let you know that we do have a court report taking everything down, so please speak loudly and clearly. Okay. Okay. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to address the court today. When my husband, Mike, was diagnosed with cancer, he wanted to keep it private. Which, with each visit to his oncologist, we received more discouraging news. His cancer was aggressive. While we were all struggling to accept the reality of the situation, Mike started planning. He wanted to go to work and accomplish as many of his goals as possible, and he did everything to prepare our family for a future that he may not be here for. He never once thought of himself. After sharing his diagnosis with his staff and learning that Ms. Larisha, his secretary and friend, had organized the ARCS fight for 45K, he said to me, why me? I'm not that special. Not a lot of people get this kind of support. It wasn't easy for my husband to accept help. He worked hard to support and provide for a family, but being faced with the possibility of not being able to do that any longer to him was almost harder than dealing with his cancer. On his worst days, he was more worried about me and the girls and concerned about how we would be when he was no longer here to provide for us. He was so incredibly appreciative and grateful for everyone's support. It meant the world to him and to our family and it brought him some peace of mind when he desperately needed it. My husband passed on November 26, 2023, five weeks after the 5K and exactly five months after his diagnosis. On December 2nd, Ms. Larisha came to Mike's service. She hugged me, our daughters, Mike's parents, his brothers, sister following the service. She was cold, distant, evasive, and barely acknowledged us. At first, I didn't understand why but then I did. 298 people paid and signed up to run in the 5K and another 275 people are documented as having donated to the fundraiser. It's 573 people that we know of who shut up for my husband. Those supporters included family, friends, neighbors, community members, former and current colleagues and students and business owners. Ms. Larisha's own daughter even donated. During the most difficult time in our life, while dealing with incredible, heart-wrenching grief, we became aware of Ms. Larisha's actions. To have to deal with this every day and think about it every day when we should be focusing on each other and mourning the loss of our husband, father, son, brother, uncle, and friend has been extremely difficult for my family. We have been faced with this in the news media, on social media, and we are asked about it in almost every conversation we have with people. Ms. Larisha's actions have affected our grieving process in ways I can't even begin to explain. I don't just wake up every day and feel the incredible loss of my husband all over again. I also feel anger and frustration. Mike would have been devastated to know what she has done, not just to him, but to everyone who supported him. And it's devastating to our family to know what she did, that her actions are tied to the memory of a kind, wonderful, and caring man. What she did was purely selfish, and she has shown no remorse aside from being sorry that she was caught. I'm glad that Mike did not get an answer to his question, why me? Because for Miss Larisha, the answer was he was an opportunity. She was in a position of trust, and she used that position to take advantage of him and his condition and all of the kind and generous individuals who truly loved and cared for him and she was clearly not his friend. We are grateful to the detectives of the South, Union Lindhurst, South of the Lindhurst Police Department for their thorough investigation and to this court for seeing Ms. Larisha is held accountable for her actions. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Patel, anything else on behalf of the state of Ohio? Only, Your Honor, that as part of this plea agreement, as the court is aware, Ms. LaRoche did agree to recommend to this court a sentence of incarceration. We would ask the court to sentence her to prison based upon that jointly agreed plea. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patel. Ms. Caruso. Thank you, Your Honor. Morgan Caruso on behalf of Ms. LaRoche. May it please Your Honor, the court. We are here for sentencing today following Stacy's full acceptance of responsibility in this matter. She offers no excuses for her behavior. She did provide a significant amount of money to the boarding family, but it wasn't all of it. She has now a felony record. She is aware that she is going to prison today. Prior to this, the woman standing next to me had nothing more than traffic tickets. She is embarrassed and devastated by her behavior. I do believe that the resolution was appropriate in that there were amendments and reductions made as far as our plea agreement. As Mr. Patel indicated, that does include prison time. And again, she's aware that she's going today. She'll be gone for the holidays. She'll be away from her daughter. But in my discussions with her yesterday, as we prepared for this hearing, she indicated to me that that pain that she feels is nothing in comparison to what Principal Fording's family has likely gone through during this unfathomable period of grief. And she is extremely remorseful that this matter has colored that time period for them with added stress and devastation. Your Honor, I'd like to read into the record in open court today just a brief statement provided by Stacy as she won't be speaking. When she was interviewed by the Adult Probation Department in the context of her pre-sentence investigation report, Stacy's words were, It started with me holding a race for my boss. The intentions were very pure in the beginning. I did take money for my personal use. I didn't mean to cause the family any more pain or grief than what they were already going through. I'm so sorry. This is not the type of role model I want to be for my daughter. I apologize from the bottom of my heart. I will never be able to make the situation okay, but I want to start by paying restitution to them. And that, Your Honor, is the end of her statement. As indicated by the County Prosecutor's Office, a significant portion of the order of restitution has already been made, and she intends to pay back every penny. With that, Your Honor, we ask you to please fashion a reasonable sentence today, again knowing that Stacy will be headed to prison to answer for the responsibility she's taken here. And by agreement, we do expect in about 90 days for this honorable court, and by agreement with the Prosecutor's Office, to look highly favorably upon a motion for judicial release after about 90 days of incarceration. We wish the family closure in this matter, the closure that they finally deserve, and we ask you to please fashion a reasonable sentence today, Judge. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cruz. I know you stated that you read a statement on behalf of your client. I still want to give Ms. LaRusha the opportunity to speak if she so chooses. Ms. LaRusha, anything you'd like to add at this juncture? No, Your Honor. All right, thank you, Ms. LaRusha. All right, before imposing sentence, the court notes for the record that it is considered the oral statements made here today. 
the victim impact statement provided by Mrs. Fording, the pre-sentence investigation report that was completed by Investigator Fertania, as well as all the other information included in the record. The court must and has formulated its decision based upon the overriding principles and purposes of felony sentencing, namely to protect the public from future crime by the defender or others, and to punish the offender using the minimum sanctions that the court determines accomplish those purposes without imposing an unnecessary burden on the state or local government resources. To achieve these purposes, the court has considered the need for incapacitation, deterrence, rehabilitation, and providing restitution. The court must and has also considered the seriousness and the recidivism factors relevant to the offense and offender pursuant to Revised Code 2929.12. The court must and has ensured that the sentence being imposed does not demean the seriousness of the crime and the impact it has on the victims and is consistent with other similar offenses committed by like offenders. Finally, this sentence is not based upon any impermissible purposes, namely the race, ethnic background, gender, religion of Ms. Larisha. Now, Ms. Larisha, this is just an unfathomable set of events that led you here today. Not only did you take advantage of your position within the South Euclid Lyndhurst School District, you took advantage of a friend, a family in crisis, in grief, in need, when the expectation would have been that you would have been doing anything possible to aid them through this terrible time in their lives. And yet, when faced with the horrific news that Mr. Fording would not be able to survive from his diagnosis, you took advantage of not only his goodwill, but the family's goodwill as well. And you compounded their grief and anguish by making them deal with this process, put off their own healing process, and continue to think about what has transpired over the last 18 months. I hope you think about that while you're in prison. My sincere hope is that you reflect upon it and at some juncture, maybe the Fording family can forgive you. But what you did to them is just absolutely horrific. The court finds that prison is consistent with the purposes of Revised Code 2929.11. The court imposes a prison term on count one at Marysville of 12 months. The court imposes a prison sentence on count three at Marysville of 12 months. Those prison sentences will run concurrent with each other for a total prison sentence of 12 months. Upon completion of your prison term, Ms. Lucia, you may be subject to a term of post-release control by the Adult Parole Authority for a period of up to two years. If this period of post-release control is imposed following your release from prison and you violate conditions of that supervision, the Adult Parole Authority may return you to prison for up to a period of one half of the original sentence imposed. If you fail to report to your parole officer while on post-release control, you could be indicted for another offense called escape where you may face additional prison time. If while on post-release control you are convicted of a new felony offense, 
in addition to being punished for the underlying conduct of that additional felony offense, you may face an additional consecutive prison term of one year or what time remains on your post loose control term, whichever is greater as a maximum. Finally, while on post loose control, you may not ingest or be injected with a drug of abuse and you must submit to random drug testing. <clears throat> you will get full credit for the time you've already served on this case. That is two days you have credit of time served during the pendency of this matter. Uh, as stated before, I do have a receipt that was turned in for payments made today towards the restitution. At the time of the plea, the total amount of restitution owed to the Fording family was $25,050.68. The amount owed to the South Euclid Linder School District was $2,688. I have receipts totaling $12,500 that have been paid today. That remains a balance of $15,238 in restitution owed to the Fording family. Uh, since that restitution is owed, I will not issue any fines and I will waive all fees and costs so that any money that you make will go to the Fording family. Furthermore, depending on how you conduct yourself while incarcerated, the court did state to the parties that it will consider a motion for judicial release and have a judicial release hearing after the service of 90 days. Anything further, Ms. Caruso? No, Your Honor, thank you. Anything further, Mr. Patel? No, Your Honor, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, you will be remanded to the custody of the county sheriff. They will be ordered to transport you. All right, that's right. We are adjourned. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you.